Today you're going to be on a fun ride of multiple things, so if you haven't already been amazed. Today, we're pulling the curtain back and taking you inside the Woodland Park Zoo. Tim and Zan are way off in the tree. They're a bit shy, but we'll take you up there. New exhibits. New animals. <laughs> Who do we have there? And new adventures await right now on Cairo 7. Welcome back to the Woodland Park Zoo. I'm Matthew Smith, but today the spotlight, it's on our zookeepers. We're gonna help you walk a mile in their shoes. What's that mean? We're gonna show you who cares for these animals, what the prep looks like before the day even begins. And of course, we got here bright and early so we can pull that curtain back. You know, I saw, I saw read about dinosaurs, colored, drew dinosaurs, all of that stuff like that. My mom took me to the zoo the first time and I saw one of these guys right here. And the first one, I'm like, dinosaur? You know, my mom says to me, no, unfortunately, you know, sweetie, that's not a dinosaur. Dinosaurs are long gone, you know, this is the reason. Um, I don't want ever to be able to tell, you know, my family member or something like that, that these guys are no longer there. Don't worry, you're gonna see the animals, just how big a rhino is, how tall a giraffe is, or how elusive a jaguar is. But the zookeepers have to get here super early, way before you see the crowds. But if you get here early enough, you'll see all the animals have one similarity, how they're cared for. Buttercup! We're out on the savannah with Lauren Sutherland Cook, and Buttercup, the gazelle, seems happy about that. Hi. You want some lettuce? She's one of a number of animals that coexist here on the savannah. Come on, boys. From geese to zebras, even an ostrich. <laughs> Everyone needs some attention. And some of the animals out here are big. I mean huge. So the time with Buttercup is short as a trio of keepers spread out and rake up. What we affectionately call zoo the animals look on as zookeeper Lauren. Good girls, come on, let's go. Is constantly in a state of motion. She has to be to keep up with the giraffes, which are heading back onto the savanna after that cleanup. A lot of it can't happen with the animals in certain spaces. So you have very specific, like I have to do this so this can happen. Which is why her colleague Matt is clearing out the hippo pool, raking, spraying it down, then filling it up with hundreds of gallons of water so the other stars of the savannah, this pair of hungry, hungry hippos, can make their way in. We all are constantly working together to achieve the common goal of getting the animals out on the savannah every day and making them have a fun day. I may not speak hippo, but that smile looks appreciative so this pair can enjoy their water and this loss. Another team effort here. All of it grown and cut within the zoo. Jillian chops down, removes, and drags these brows and delivers them every morning. Remember, giraffes in the wild eat dozens of pounds, yes, pounds of leaves daily. But let's get back to Lauren. Good job, Dave. Well, Lauren and Dave back in the barn. We spend a lot of time building a bond and a relationship with them. This brushing mimics a sensation Dave will feel later this week when an expert comes in to give him laser therapy on his hip. Matt is keeping Dave busy. All of this is helping him because months ago he was rubbing his hip constantly. If you have a sore arm or it's asleep, like a lot of times you'll push on it and try and help stimulate it and wake it up. So we were seeing Dave after his muscle injury doing that to a lot of different things. But learning and understanding that what was wrong took time. Remember, Dave can't talk, neither can Olivia or Tufani, which is why when Dave's done with his training in the barn, Lauren plays Dr. Doolittle. No, not talking to the animals, dissecting hours of video to log that behavior. And when that's done, it's time to start chopping up food and loading up these creative devices. Remember, giraffes stretch to eat in the wild. So they need to recreate that here inside the zoo. 
even inside their barn. Now, it's tough work. Caring for these animals often involves logging 10 plus miles every day for Lauren. Because the rotation to feed and clean up after these animals takes a lot of work. Whether it's a gazelle, a hippo, or giraffe, it's not just the physical. Go on. It's the mental stuff, too. Compassion fatigue is a real threat if these keepers don't work together and lean on one another. When Dave was not feeling as well, it was very hard to watch him when we didn't know what was wrong with him and feeling like I wasn't being able to help him because he couldn't talk to me. Um, and it was hard, it's hard because, you know, he's such a large animal and you're trying to diagnose what is wrong with him and I can't just tell him, hey, I need to do this, which is not going to be fun. It was truly a team effort to discover what was wrong with him. Now on the men, the work will not get easier, but that doesn't mean there's any less love for the job. Just because all the things that I'm doing aren't fun is giving them fun things. You smiled when you said that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Seeing your work and seeing them enjoy it makes everything worth it. Hi. What a better job. <laughs> Welcome back to Woodland Park Zoo. We've got a lot going on here, including an introduction to Chad, our zookeeper here. We're going to have to pull out all the equipment because we're now talking about the one-horned rhino, and they are a lot to deal with. Coming up, it's time for a rhino spa day with zookeeper Chad Harmon. I'm very, very fortunate. You know, yes, I have two animals that I work very, very closely with, and they are like such a huge part of my life. So pick up a shovel and let's get to work. Your day in the life of a keeper is just getting started. Oh! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> that was awesome. Cairo 7 Cares is here to help those who need it most. By supporting local nonprofits and events to help give more people access to basic needs. Let's work together to make a difference. Right here in Western Washington, Cairo 7 Cares. Welcome back to Woodland Park Zoo. Here's the time we grab the big shovels and we roll up the sleeves because we're going to be introducing you to the trainer that takes care of the one horned rhinos. Now, Taj is a little shy here, but Glenn is hanging out. He's the star of the show. At least to the visitors. But before rhinos can frolic in their pool, someone has to scoop the poop and put out the hay. Chad Harmon is the guy doing it all with a smile. <laughs> There's a crazy cat lady. There's definitely a crazy rhino dude on that guy. What is that, T? Chad's passion for these giants is infectious. I think I'm supposed to turn it off when I go home. <laughs> if you talk to my wife and probably those um, who have worked with me in the past, um, I don't. I, I, I mean, when these guys first got here, I was here as much as the zoo would allow me to be here. <laughs> You need to go home, you need to eat, you need to sleep. So Chad gladly explains why these rhino's tails fit into this narrow canal, or how they don't have the best eyesight, but a great sense of smell to offset that. But I was most impressed by this almost finger-like lip as I got a chance to feed Taj. Frankly, I kind of wish I had one of these. But Chad's quickly back to work because Taj and Glenn need tons of attention. Filling the pool here is a daily step. These guys take up a pretty sizable footprint. Hey, Taj. Good boy, buddy. So Chad rotates them through various areas daily, opening and closing gates and calling them in for feedings. Let's go, Taj, good. All of this is under the watchful eyes of keepers in person or from behind the scenes. And I can move around so I can see where the rhinos are right now. Every single movement is tracked. We're trying to recreate something that they would normally have in the wild right here at the zoo. And a lot is taken care of, but there also needs to be some sort of, some sort of a schedule, some sort of a pattern. Good boy, Glenny. I know. Part of the routine lately is training these massive rhinos to lift their feet on cue. But 
All right, good job, buddy. Chad and Allison here, another trainer, have been slowly asking Taj and Glenn here to put their feet up onto this contraption. It's a little taller every week. It's taken months to get to this point. Good boy. It's a very specific training because rhinos are prone to foot problems. And if they need attention one day, this could pay huge dividends. It's much easier for us to be able to get something voluntary, to train them to be able to lift their leg. So we, oh, there's a cut there. We can apply ointment. We know we can take photographs. Is this something we can put on a plate and actually take radiographs? Much safer for the animal, much safer for us. They are, after all, more than 3,500 pounds a piece and growing. But nothing is forced here. Food entices them, but note they can willingly back out. They're a very intelligent rhino species. But now the training is done. It's time to clean up once again and prep the next meal. For Chad, though, this isn't work work. It's a passion dating back decades. My mom took me to the zoo the first time and I saw one of these guys right here in the first one, like dinosaur. You know, my mom says to me, no, unfortunately, you know, sweetie, that's not a dinosaur. Dinosaurs are long gone. You know, this is the reason. I don't want ever to be able to tell, you know, my family member or something like that, that these guys are no longer there. You all are so close to the animals, but you're watching something that could be gone. Does that weigh heavy on you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's huge. It's a big, I don't think people, fully understand it. Chad's emotional because Taj and Glenn's wild cousins are dying off. Like many animals, they're hunted, their land is disappearing. These are the difficult conversations. But this pair. Oh! <laughs> dude, dude. Know how to change the mood. <laughs> there's that lip I was telling you about, right? <laughs> the lip. <laughs> a reminder that while there's a lot of stress, this pair can always <laughs> remind us there's a time to worry and a time to smile. I can't think of doing anything else. I just can't. Now, we just finished cleaning up after these rhinos, and Chad did a lot of the work, but take a look behind me here. You'd think the rhinos did all the heavy lifting. Now that you've been introduced to these rhinos, let's take a look at some of the more elusive animals here inside the Woodland Park Zoo. From jaguars to baby birds, we will fly high and tuck down low to better understand what it takes to care for the magnificent animals here. But before the break, we want to get your brains working with a little bit of trivia. So your question is, what is the largest feline species in the Western Hemisphere? Is it the jaguar, the cougar, the snow leopard, or the lion? We'll have your answer and more when your look inside Woodland Park Zoo returns. Cairo 7 Cares is here to help those who need it most. By supporting local nonprofits and events to help give more people access to basic needs. Let's work together to make a difference. Right here in Western Washington, Cairo 7 Cares. Today you're gonna be on a fun ride of possible things. So if you haven't already been amazed. Today, we're pulling the curtain back and taking you inside the Woodland Park Zoo. Tia and Zan are way up in the tree. A bit shy, but we'll take you up there. New exhibits. New animals. <laughs> Who do we have there? And new adventures await right now on Cairo 7. So you're taking a look at this big cat, and let me tell you, it keeps the zookeepers busy. We got here at the break of dawn, hours before things opened up, so we could meet with a zookeeper that takes care of this big cat. Because well, if you're looking for the jaguar, they like to feed early in the morning. That's because this jag loves to sleep. In the wild, they nap about half of the day away. So catching this big cat on the prowl like this is a special treat for you and for visitors inside the Woodland Park Zoo. But while the jag roams around, we should see what else is happening behind the scenes. Hi, Kaylee. Joanna Class, hey, seen here, is one of the lead keepers here at the zoo. Hi, dude. I found her checking in on Kaylee, the golden lion tamarind, a small primate that can get picked off in the wild. So our unfamiliar cameraman Hi, Kaylee. wasn't getting a red carpet welcome. 
But Kaylee likes to steal food from the other Tamarind when no one is looking. So it was no surprise that she swooped in to grab the treat after all. I'm going to take that as a win. Of course, this isn't about the food for Joanna. She's using this opportunity to get eyes on Kaylee. In fact, every animal under her care today will need a visual inspection. A lot of animals really like to try and hide things from you. You know, it's not, it's just their innate behavior. Like if they're looking weak or showing an obvious injury or limp, they might get picked off if they're a prey animal. So we have to kind of really know those animals. And that also ties back into working together, working in unison and kind of collaborating with coworkers. And that collaboration she mentions matters. Cow butters. You've met both Lauren and Chad today. Good. They always need to inspect. All right. So you're probably getting the sense that there's a lot of keepers. Joanna is one of five or six working at this moment in this section of the zoo. Snuggle, you want to come say hi again? Among Joanna's duties today, the sake monkeys you see here. What are you doing, buddy? Carson, one of the zoo's red pandas. You want to come on down? <laughs> and that's before the tarantula. Yes, a tarantula. Doing kind of my life checks, making sure everybody looks OK this morning. And we can't forget about the birds. Joanna helps out with them too. Oh, really? You're just, you are just being gratuitous. Which includes this pregnant banana quip. This birdie is more than happy to tell us to pause our interview. There you go. Just to get an extra waxworm or two. Yes, there's never a dull moment inside TRF, known to guests as the tropical rainforest. Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's also colobus monkeys, red rough lemurs, and ring tailed lemurs on top of the jag that we saw stalking around earlier. And those are just some of the notable larger animals, but animals of all sizes. Good boy. From toucans to this cock of the rock, or that smallish banana quit, they all need attention. Here you go, dude. Let's go. Which is why all work in the zoo ultimately becomes a team effort. There's a lot of communication that goes on here, and it can happen very quickly. Things change sometimes within minutes, you know, working with living animals and plants and guests. <laughs> so it can change pretty rapidly. You know, we bring these animals down to the vet wing. They can't talk. Some of them can, but not really how you and I would talk. So we are their advocates because the vets want to know exactly what's going on. And so they're kind of relying on us to tell their story and help piece things together that would result in the best care. There you go. But I'm getting ahead of myself because we haven't even finished our morning rounds. Let's catch back up with Carson. Bamboo shoots are one of their favorite things. They're one of his favorite things for sure. He's munching on bamboo as Joanna takes the time to explain that interesting ability of red pandas. You see, he can hold both the bamboo with his mouth. Yeah. But he can also use a modified wrist that sort of acts like a thumb. However, that's not the most impressive thing keepers notice. It baffles keepers throughout the world, <laughs> just how much they produce. She's talking about poop. Yes, adorable as they are, red pandas create quite a mess and it falls on the keepers to clean it all up. There we go. And Carson's not the only red panda here. Remember Tian and Zan from our babies episode? Well, these youngins need attention. So Joanna stepped in to help out here. As a feeding, welfare check, and cleanup was done for this adorable pair by another keeper. Can I get an assist? Yeah. I know, you're such a good supervisor. But the fun is quickly over. We're back for another round of deep cleaning for the primates, both in the main exhibits and behind the scenes, where a lot of animals like to sleep or sometimes eat when not on display. Hi guys. We're back at the sake monkeys now. And while they're enjoying the day, Joanna is off working up paper bags as enrichments. Later today, the monkeys will dig through these to find their snacks. One of the many ways to encourage foraging behavior, a natural behavior out in the wild. And I'll be doing this for about an hour. It's a lot of animals. And they all got to eat. And while they check out those bags, Joanna is moving on to prepping food for tomorrow. After all, who knows these animals die better than the keepers? And Kaylee, she's got a history of uh, being rather heavy. So we want to be able to watch that. And if the job hasn't seemed busy enough, Joanna carves out time for another long term commitment. The red breasted geese. We have two females nesting in here. They're not in the TRF, 
but she manages the breed's species survival plan. This particular waterfowl has been teetering between endangered and vulnerable for years. And because their wild cousins almost exclusively breed in Arctic Russia, there's a lot at stake here. If one thing goes wrong in one of those crucial stopover wintering sites, it can be, it can have a huge ripple effect on the entire population. So while you hear honks or squawks, he is just kind of like, you're looking sus. What are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, they definitely have a lot of attitude. Joanna sees an animal doing what it should be in the wild, protecting their nests. <laughs> because at the end of the day, that is the goal here. Yes, they care for these animals, but they're trying to create those real world experiences. Sometimes that means cleaning up after an animal, picking out a diet that fits, or doing those checks with each of the animals. You still eating? All of this plays into a goal to recreate natural behaviors, whether the animal's big or small. Caring for all of them is tough work, but at the end of the day, each keeper tells me there's never ending rewards here. I think that's a wonderful balance because you have an animal that's comfortable with you, but is also doing its natural behaviors. When you have birds that will actually, or any animal really, you get them to the point where they're comfortable enough and they feel like, hey, this is a good place to raise some kids. Does that feel like a lot of pressure on you all? <laughs> Ah, uh, in what way, I guess, just that all these animals are depending on us for yeah. their every need. <laughs> well, okay, way, when, you, yeah. when you put it like that, uh, yeah, it is a lot of pressure. We all want to do the best that we can for these guys. I mean, we are responsible for them. They deserve everything we can give them. The zoo has this powerful quote up from the first president of Tanzania. Now, in a nutshell, he basically says we have to leave something behind for our kids and our grandkids. And what they're talking about are the animals. It may sound familiar to the zookeepers, right? Very similar mission. Now, we have put on a lot of miles on these shoes today, but don't worry, I would not let you go without giving you an answer to the trivia question. So, we asked you, what is the largest feline species in the Western Hemisphere? Is it the jaguar, the cougar, snow leopard, or the lion? Now, if you guess the jag, you get today's gold star. We actually spent some time with Fitz today. Weighing in at over 120 pounds, let me tell you, that big cat is impressive. Now, we're gonna be coming back with an episode about animal care, going all the way from infant to geriatric. For now, I'm Matthew Smith, and this has been your look inside the Woodland Park Zoo.